Hello everyone and welcome back to our class of Eurocode 7, Geotechnical Design. I think in the last video, we started to make, to do to work on one example on design of foundation, one building. We have established different forces acting on the foundation. However, the example is more related to the foundation design. So, We'll just uh, keep it like that and continue with another chapter until we complete the chapter on shallow foundation, which is, I think, chapter number four of this program. After completing chapter number four, we will resume the example because there are a lot of things in that example that are directly related to shallow foundation. So to make it easy for you to understand, we will complete the chapter on shallow foundation first before to continue that example, okay? So with this video, we will we will start the chapter number three, which is about uh, ground investigation, okay? In uh, this chapter, ground investigation and testing, which is actually the, the second part of Eurocode 7. Because in the, I think in the chapter one or two, we have talked about two parts of Eurocode. Part one and part two. Part two is about ground investigation. Okay. So this chapter number three, we will talk about some important point of the part two of Eurocode seven. Okay, so in this video will cover mainly three points overview, definition, and planning of ground investigation. Okay, so we will do at least, I think, at least uh, three to four videos for this chapter. Okay, so about the ground investigation, the overview of ground investigation, uh, as I was telling you. This one is covered by the part two of Eurocode. So the part two of Eurocode 7, EN 1997 2. Okay, that is talking, that is covering the ground investigation. Okay. And uh, this part two of Eurocode 7, is intended to be used in junction with the part one okay part one is mainly for design and part two is geotechnical investigation ground investigation okay so by joining this part two of eurocore to the part one it will provide rules related to planning and reporting of ground investigation it will also provide the rules relating to general requirements for number of commonly used laboratory tests and field tests. How many lab tests or and field tests do you need for each project, each type of project? Okay. Also, interpretation and evaluation of the test result itself. Doing the test is one thing. Interpreting the, the result from the test are also another thing, very important, okay? So establishment of derived value. Derived value, we will talk about this later, of geotechnical parameter and coefficients, okay? Another one is the, the, the part that is covered by Eurocode, the part one of Eurocode, one is characteristic value. Here we, we, we see here derived value and here characteristic value. These two are very different. So part two is mainly about these four points. Okay. The part one of Europol seven covers establishment of characteristic value. So 
as these characteristic value that are covered by Eurocode 7 one, part one, they are based on ground investigation actually. So because of that, the provision of the determination will be uh, explained in this chapter because they are linked to ground investigation, the characteristic value. Data is value, characteristic value, different, okay? So the part two is mainly a standard for ground, for the geotechnical engineer and expert for soil and rock testing. It's just for testing, lab testing, field testing, not for designers, okay? The part two is not for design. May it maybe it for design, but not hundred percent. It mainly for testing. Okay, experiment, ground investigation, lab investigation. So only small part of the standard is for designers. Okay, only small part, and then we will try in this chapter to restrict to those items which are important for design. So it's important I keep it just here. It's important for designer. It importance for designer is stressed in this part of Euro code. You can check by yourself. Okay. So it should be Consider that the knowledge of ground condition depend on the extent and quality of the ground of the geotechnical investigation. So that means if you do intensive and geotechnical investigation in quality and in quantity, then you will get uh, good knowledge of the ground condition, okay? Do the geotechnical investigation as much as possible, and you will get more information about ground condition. That is the meaning, okay? So such knowledge, and the control of workmanship are usually more significant to fulfill the fundamental requirement than its precision in the calculation method and partial factors. Okay. It means that knowing the ground condition is more important than the calculation model or partial factors. Because if you miss the one important information about the ground, it doesn't matter how calculation your calculation is strong or partial factors are good, your structure will not stand long. Which means ground condition, knowledge of ground condition and controlling the work the workmanship are more important than everything else. They are more significant to fulfill to fulfill the fundamental requirements than is precision in the calculation model. If your calculation models are very precise, the partial factors are very precise, everything is okay. But if you don't know, you don't have much knowledge on your ground, the ground condition, it's meaningless. So all this to tell you how important is the knowing the ground condition is, okay? And the part two of Eurocode 7 has the following content to, to let you have uh, enough knowledge on the ground condition. The first one is general. Second is planning of ground investigation. Number two, soil and rock sampling and groundwater measurement. 
field testing in soil and rock. Five, laboratory tests in soil in, on soil and rock. Six, a ground investigation. Report, the report of the ground investigation. And above this, six point, there are also 23 annexes. So the part two of, uh, of Eurocode 7, part two is covering this point, okay? So we hope that it will help people to have much more knowledge on the ground condition, since this is very important for any project. In the, the part two, only give actually general requirement of field and laboratory test. The execution itself, execution of work is standardized in separate ISO standard and EN ISO standards. So we will talk about these standards right now. The first one is this one, EN ISO standard uh, 20, 22,476, 22, which has 13 parts for field testing. So it means for field testing, the execution of field testing, I, I think it's very important for you to understand the meaning here. The Eurocode, the part two of Eurocode is giving you the general requirement, okay? However, for the execution of the work, how to do the work, execution of the work, these are, if you want to know that, you have to refer to this, okay? For in case of field testing, this norm has 13 parts of field testing, field test. And for laboratory testing, lab test, we have this one. You have to refer to this one. It has 12 parts, okay? And this one, the EN ISO 14,688 and the EN ISO 14,689 to specify the identification of soil and rock. While this, ref this, this standard, the EN ISO 22,475 standardizes sampling and groundwater measurement. Okay, it's very simple, I think. The requirements are given by Eurocode 7, the part two of Eurocode 7. For the execution of the work, in case of field test, you refer to this one, this standard. In case of execution of laboratory test testing, standard, you refer to this standard. In case of identification of soil in rock, you refer to these two, soil and rock. And in case of sampling and groundwater measurement, you refer to this one. This is how you can get the execution of the work. So the part two of Eurocode 7 is just giving you the general requirement, okay? Okay, let's go to the definitions, the part two of this chapter. So about definitions, those also are somehow important. If you check this section of the part two of Eurocode 7, The definition of derived value, this is very important because it's different from characteristic value. So this part of the, the second part of Eurocode 7 will give you the definition of derived value. And it's saying that value of geotechnical parameter obtained from the result from test result by theory, correlation, or by doing empirical work, empirically, okay? So 
to distinguish this derived value from characteristic value of geotechnical parameter. The derived value is explained in this chart. Very different. Here, the first row, the first line, F is for field test. L is for lab test, okay? Type of test and correlation. So F1, F2 means field test one, field test two, lab test one, lab test two, okay? And correlations are here. And this line is for test result and derived value one two three four so i hope you understand derived value value of geotechnical parameter obtained from the result of test test result okay so this this line is for for example if they the value derived value from from field test one derived value from field test Two, maybe there is correlation here. Derived value from field uh, from lab test one. Derived value from lab test two. Okay. Yeah. Then euro code. The part two is about this. Then the part one will take care of this until you obtain the characteristic value here. Okay. So. The process of evaluation, evaluation test result start with the numerical result of different field and laboratory tests. So the result, okay, numerical result. And the, the basis of evaluation of all tests is a theory and for some of them, correction and correlation have to be applied have to apply some correlation or correlation after the test, okay? Then this is the limit of the part two of Eurocode 7. The next step after obtaining after this part is the selection of the characteristic value, Gaussian selection of the characteristic value, okay? Because each test will give you different uh, derived value. You will obtain maybe if you take, if you want, for example, uh, cohesion, for example, and from field test, you will obtain derived value. Field test two, you will obtain a derived value of cohesion. Uh, lab test one, you will obtain derived value. Uh, and uh, lab test two, you will obtain another value, okay? So the next step you do is selection of the characteristic value of your technical property. Then taking into account the derived value. So you, the derived value you obtain here, okay? After taking the derived value, you obtain from the test and field test and lab test. Then there are some geotechnical items of the project you need to consider. And some information of other sources on the site, soil and rock. You include those information also. Okay, then this second step is covered by the part one of Eurocode one or Eurocode seven, sorry. The first part of Eurocode seven. Okay. So after doing all that, you can then obtain your characteristic value of your technical property. And then you continue application of partial factors, design value of your technical property. So all this to say that. Characteristic value just obtained from the different test field and lab, lab test you obtain. 
And by don't forget that to obtain this characteristic value, you sometimes need some correlation, some uh, empirical procedure on the test before you obtain this derived value. And if you take the derived value, you add some item, geotechnical item of the project. You add some other if some other information from the the site, the construction site, information on soil and rock. And from that, you as geotechnical engineer, as designer, because that part is from design. So you based on that, you obtain you can obtain the characteristic value of geotechnical property. That it. So one part, the derived value is Eurocode 7, part 2. For people who are doing testing, field testing, lab testing, all this. Okay, just testing engineers. And then they will give this characteristic value, sorry, derived value to designers, people who are designing. So technically, you as designer, you just obtain the characteristic value. Uh, you, you obtain the derived value from the test. Okay. And from the derived value, you take a lot of information about project and the soil. And based on that, you will get the characteristic value as designer. And by adding parcel factors, on the characteristic value, you will obtain the design value of geotechnical property. Derived value plus some in other information on the ground and the, the rock or the construction site and some other information, you obtain characteristic value. And this characteristic value plus partial factors. When I say plus, it doesn't mean literally plus. Just you add partial factor, maybe by multiplying or dividing. Okay. <laughs> After doing that, you obtain the design value of geotechnical property. Very simple. Okay. And that includes everything, all geotechnical property. Uh, internal friction angle, cohesion, everything, all the value you need, the unit weight, okay? I hope it's clear. <laughs> okay, let's continue to the planning, the third part of this chapter, planning of ground investigation. How do you do planning of ground investigation? Planning, planning. Oh, sorry. Okay, ground investigation shall provide description of ground and groundwater condition relevant to the proposed work and establish a basis of the assessment of the geotechnical parameter relevant to the construction stage. I, th I think ground investigation sh should give you everything you need about the ground everything that is needed about the ground and ground condition, including groundwater, everything, geotechnical parameter. And that is for all construction stages, not only once, but during the whole construction stages. For example, the groundwater condition is where, what, what, where is the ground water level during this stage of construction, during the next stage of construction, okay? So, the ground investigation should give you all that. So this kind of investigation are normally performed in stages, not only once, okay? There are different stages. And you know that the first and most important, maybe one, should be desk study. In the office, you have to, the first step is desk study first. 
and in that you have to gather a lot of information on this the construction site first existing information already like geological maps and description previous investigations that is available already on the site surrounding and photos area of photo previous photos topographies topographical maps all the information you can you can get on the construction site or not only the construction site even the, the surrounding areas of the construction site everything you can get you should cover it and do work office first okay and the most important part is uh, in city investigation the location where you should do the, the investigation. For example, sampling, what, where should you do some, your sampling? The location and the depth, at which depth you have to do your sampling. Is it only two meters, five meters, 20 meters deep, for example? The number of investigation point, points, how many points you need? How many sampling points you need? What should be the distance between these two, the, 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 the points? The sampling point, for example, or not only sampling, investigation point, testing point. For example, if you are doing CPT test, for example, in the field, how many CPT tests you need? What should be the distance between two tests? Okay. At what depth uh, are you limiting to only five meter, ten meter for of your CPT? Those are very important. And the annex B three of Eurocode of the second part of Eurocode seven is giving you recommendation for spacing and depth of investigation for different geotechnical structure. Yeah, of course, because when you have each type of Geotechnical structure has its requirements. Okay. So the following spacing investigation points should be used as guidance. So, first, if you have high rise building, because different type of building, different way of investigation, of course. For high rise and industrial structure, the grid part, a pattern with 15 meter to 40 meter distance okay the distance between the investigation point if you are doing spt for example from one point to another what should be the distance it should be within 15 meter to 20 to 4 40 meter distance for large area structure the grid pattern with point should should not exceed 60, 60 meter distance. For linear structure, for example, road, railway, channels, dike, pipeline, all these retaining walls, spacing of 20 meter to 200 meter spacing, because that will take kilometers. If you want to do 15, 15 meters, like here, you will never finish because these sometimes take kilometers and kilometers. For special structure, like bridges, for example, uh, two or six investigation point per foundation. So each foundation should have minimum six until a minimum of two investigation. If you're doing a, a machinery foundation, because the machine, because of vibration of the machine, it's very important for you to have, for each foundation, you need at least two points um, until six points is okay. Investigation for each foundation. For dams, for example, 25 meter to 75 meter distance is okay along the vertical section, okay? So investigation depth, now the, the, the depth, how how 
how many meters from the ground surface you should go for the spacing you have we have talked about the spacing previously now the depth for example for the pile foundation see this figure pile foundation for example we have these piles and this this section view and plan view maybe piles okay z the z a means this step from whoops, from the ground surface to here we say the z the z a should meet for example it should be higher than one time b the b g is what this distance means this total distance It should be larger than five meters. So minimum should be larger than five meters. It should be larger than three times DF means the diameter, for example, of the, the pipe. So all these three requirements should be satisfied. DF is the pile base diameter, of course, as here. This B. This BG is this the smaller side of the rectangular circumference, the group pipe, for example, this side, not to this side. So the length of this, the total distance. Okay. So the pile length will be the the, 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 the depth for the ground investigation should be deeper than higher than this distance larger than five meter or longer than higher than five meter and the higher than three times the pile diameter these two conditions should be satisfied okay for sampling for example the part two of zero code seven in this section is saying that for identification and classification of the ground, at least one borehole or, or trial pit with sampling shall be available. Okay. For sample, the soil sample shall be obtained from every separate ground layer means that influencing the behavior of the structure if you have several soil layers in the underground maybe clay sun silt sandy clay this kind of thing every every soil layer that exists in the underground we should have sample of that layer Okay, so sample should be taken at any change of stratum and at specified spacing, usually not larger than three meters. The spacing should not be larger than three meters. Okay, and also in non, non homogeneous soil, means non uniform soil. Or if a detailed definition of the ground condition is required, continuous sampling by drilling should be carried out or samples recovered at every short interval. We should do that also. If the ground is not uniform. Okay. Or again, if detailed definition of the ground condition is required, sometimes some project need even if the ground is not, even if the ground is uniform, sometimes we need very detailed definition of the ground condition. In that case, you should do continuous sampling by drilling. And 
the sample recovered at very short this interval. Very short interval. Okay, soil sample for lab lab testing are divided in five five quality classes, five quality quality classes. Okay, with respect to the soil property that are assumed to remain unchanged during the sampling, handling, transport, transportation, and storage. Okay, that com combination with sampling category according to this issue. So five category, one, two, three, four, five. Five quality classes. Okay, you can read by yourself for unchanged soil property, property that can be determined. So here you can see particle sizes, water content, density, density index and permeability, compressibility, system. Each, each of them has a different type of quality. So quality number one to five. And for this property that can be determined, we have sequence of layers because by you can determine that boundary of stratus broad, boundary of stratus fine, Atomberg limit, particle density, organic content, water content, density, density and porosity, permeability, compressibility and cell strength. As you can see, this cell strength and compressibility cell strength, this here and here are all this point. Quality number one. So this table is useful for the specification of sampling for, for tender purposes. I think that is all for this video. We will continue next time with uh, maybe two points of this chapter. And maybe we hope to complete this chapter in with at least maybe four videos. Okay. Yeah. Oh, thank you very much for your time.